It's Ibanchu, and welcome back to The Walking Dead, the final season. At the end of this episode, I, I think I'm getting close to the end of the episode, I think. And when I get to the end, I want to talk about um, what I think this story is about and my thought process behind what I'm doing in the game. Uh, anyway, the last time uh, Clementine met a stranger and pushed him into a herd of walkers, I assume that he got bitten and that he's a dead man and we don't have to worry about him ever again. I assume that. Probably true. Is there something up here? Oh, great! I have a use for the deer skull. That just makes my freaking day right there. That makes my freaking day. That's cool. Yes. Oh, right? Yes, it is. Really cool. Yes. It is uber cool. That is awesome. How are you doing, AJ? You ready for bed? I'm not sleepy. <laughs> liar. You are such a liar. You are sleepy, and I'm going to turn this out, light out, and we're going to go to sleep. Let's sleep. Good night. Or... Sleep tight. Don't let a walker bite. And if they try, I never let them bite. Come on, play it right. One time, bang. <laughs> Good work, and thanks. Some kind of argument. What's that? Shh. They're ringing a bell. What the heck? There's voices in the pipes. I think someone's in trouble. Is it us? No, no, no. Not right now. But we should help them. If it's a monster, we should kill it. I don't think it is. It's you people, which is worse. Uh-huh. I'll be right back. Stay safe. You okay? They sound mad. Don't worry. I'll find out what's going on. I'm not... I remember Brody was having pan attacks and she was not pleased about leaving the safe zone and reading a stranger and got into an argument with Marlon about it. I don't know if that's who's fighting, but it could be. It's just somebody having night terrors. Who knows? Okay, which way is the noise? Is it this door over here? No, it's getting quiet again. Okay, it's not over here. I probably shouldn't open people's doors when they're sleeping at night. That's just creepy. Is it here? Sound like uh, Brody and Marlin 
So something about Lewis being in insurance policy. There's locks from both sides. Can't pick it. I have to find another way to the basement. But so most of the conversation the is wah 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 and not making out. Alright, so I gotta find another way to the basement. Uh, okay. There might be a window. The basement might have windows in it, so. Surely they post guards at night. They're not that complacent. And there's somebody outside keeping watch. Surely. So much for the candle. According to the map, there should be another entrance to the basement around here. Um... That's another thing. There was mention of a greenhouse and like, oh, don't worry about that. We we uh, gave up on that. We couldn't grow anything in there anymore. Don't go there. And I'm paranoid about what might be in the greenhouse. I'm a little disoriented as to where I came out and... Wait, what's this? A brick. Let's take a brick. You know, in The Last of Us, a brick is a great weapon. Heavy. Yes. Brick heavy. This looks like a way down right here. I could explore around a little bit more. Maybe there's more stuff to find. But this is definitely an entrance to the basement. You are Oh, shoot. The problem is they'd hear me smash the lock. So that's not going to work. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. I, I'm just going to walk around a little bit. I, I hate to miss out on some of this argument. Interesting conversation. But I'm afraid if I smash that lock, it's going to get heard. They're going to hear that. It sounds almost to me like they went somewhere they thought was private to have a conversation. All right, fine. Fine. And that's all this is. It's They're just arguing about something, and it's not anybody in trouble. So, smashing this lock and going into the basement and drawing attention is, it's, to myself, and Club Attention's getting in trouble doing that. Trouble that they don't need. Yeah, that's not, that's loud. That is so freaking loud. Surely they heard that. think it is my business. The man you met at the station, we got history. Brody? I thought so. She's acting crazy. She gets this way sometimes. She's just got to tune it out. Don't be afraid, Brody. Say what you have to say. What history? Marlon let him take the twins. Him and his people. Brody! What? 
I thought they were killed by walkers. That's the story we told everyone. Shut up! You let them be taken. Because Marlin was so ashamed of what- Shut up! What'd you say? She... I'm sorry. Shit! What have you done? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Marlin, my God! I promise. God damn it! Hell! Why did you say that? I told you not to say it. How? What can I do? Just, just stay with her. There's a first aid kit down here somewhere, right? First aid kit? Brody, it's me, Clem. Just, just stay still. Uh, who? Uh, I, I, I can't see. Clementine, remember? Clem, you're in danger. You and AJ Bo. What danger? Marlon will kill me if I tell. He's scared. It may be too late for that. And when he's scared, he gets angry. Don't worry about that now. Just, just try not to move. You're a good person, Clem. I would have liked to get to know you better. If those raiders come back, Marlon said he'd let them take you. Take us? To make him go away. <laughs> like he did. <laughs> Like he did with ten sisters. Brody. Oh, fuck. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. What the hell am I gonna do? it in there and lift up the latch. You might have to deal with uh, Brody. Stark. Just saying. Yes, oh. flash it. That'll help. All right, let's let's grab the flashlight. It was on, right? It's right over here. Tell me, Clementine, you brought your knife with you. Did she turn already? Yes, this will work. Yeah, the ruler will work. She turned already. And I don't know how to get out of here. It's to the left, I think. Lower down. Cold. Let's get out of here. Let's make it quick. Come on. Clementine, what the heck? Pick that up. Lift it, lift it. Right behind you. Oh crap. Grab it, grab it. Keep, 
bashing. Keep bashing. Keep going. Overkill. Must have been a way, other way out of here too, but I don't know what it was. Okay, we gotta get AJ. We gotta get the heck out of here. There's not gonna be any reasoning with this group. We gotta go. Where's AJ, put the gun down. Get this fucking psycho away from me. Where is she? Go ahead, shoot AJ. Oh, is that the story you're going with? Is that blood on your face? Why Brody? Did you see it happen? Is she a walker now? Hey, Marlin! You might want to get your story straight. Clem! You killed Brody. You hit her so hard, her head split open. That's a lie! I saw you kill her! What the hell is going on? Look at her hands! She's covered in Brody's blood! Well, she turned. Jesus she Christ, turned. What did you do? We saved their lives when anyone else would have kept walking! We fed them, we kept them warm. And this is how they thank us! Guns being pulled and murder! Well, fuck them! Fuck! Marlin! Jesus Christ! You shoot me? And what do you offer up to your raider friends when they come knocking? What the hell is she talking about? He won't do it, because he needs us alive! Shut up! Brody told me Marlin was gonna give me and AJ up to raiders in exchange for safety! What he did for the twins. Sophie and Minnie! Oh my god! Shut the fuck up, Clementine! Let her talk! Brody told me the truth, and that's when Marlin killed her! Ah, oh, cut him the fuck on! They only met up with these raiders because Clem insisted they go out there! Quite the coincidence, isn't it? Shame, I don't believe in those. Think about how scared we all were when the adults left. I pulled us out of that fear. I gave us all courage again. Who are you all gonna believe, huh? Johnny come lately and her little fucking lunatic? For me, you friend! She did help us get food. What good is food if a group come of on, outsiders Lewis. just gonna come along and take it? I'm just saying. Lewis, don't let him do this! Oh no, I am not involved. What? I like you, Clem, but I... You are not such me. a little wuss. You're, uh, on your own. I'm sorry. You let him shoot me. Really? Just so you don't have to get involved. I thought you were more than that. Shit. Marlin, come on, man. Drop the gun. Lewis! She killed Brody! We can't let her walk away. Clem, I... I, I gotta trust Marlin. I just... I gotta. I always have. Brody trusted him. Brody trusted him. And now she's dead. And he killed her! Take that back! Come on, dude, just drop the gun. This is how adults do things, not us. Stand down, Mark. Be reasonable. <sighs> you don't get it. You, you don't understand at all, do you? I'm trying to protect you! <laughs> All of you! Every 
fucking one of you! How does pointing a loaded gun around protect anyone? Brody's dead. Sophie and Minerva are gone. You suck at protection. Shut your fucking mouth! I made the right call. I saved the lives of everyone in this fucking school. If they came back, I'd do it again. Excuse me? I didn't realize we were so fucking expendable. They told me they died. I had to save the rest of you, okay? You gave my sisters away. Why would you do something like that? I trusted you, Marlin. They trusted you. A real leader would have sacrificed himself. That's right. I wanted to get them. States. Some kind of rescue. Honest, Ted, I just couldn't. I was... I was too afraid. You killed Brody because she knew. <laughs> I didn't mean to. I didn't want this. I wanted to save all of you. So let's, we... Let's fix this. Minerva! We can still fix this, Marlin. It's going to be okay. We can make this right. We'll help you. We're all family here. The only one any of us has left. I know I betrayed you. All of you. Just let me leave. You'll never have to see me again. Just let me become a bad memory. Look, Lily. Just give me that. Please. No. Fine. Wait, what? Oh, wait, wait. AJ, oh. There's no coming back from that, AJ. What? I saved one for me. Man. Wow. <clears throat> Holy crap, that was intense. Man, whoo, that was a strong ending. Man, I didn't mean to compose myself. Wow. Whoo, holy crap. I don't have the proper expletives to fully express how intense that was. Man. Oh. Sometimes I don't know where to stay. It's taking me. Um anyway, before I even look at this stuff and the and the choices and the percentages, um I, I said at the end I was gonna talk about what I think the story's about. And you know, I, I have a certain opinion for me about what this story's about and it that hasn't changed. Um I wanna look at the Walking Dead games together as like a long continuing saga and so i want to talk about some things from the previous games uh -huh. so it, it kind of might spoil things but look if you're watching this you've probably seen or played the previous games so the first walking dead game was about lee everett it was his story and very early on into the zombie apocalypse he comes across a defenseless innocent little eight-year-old girl named clementine Lee takes on the responsibility to protect Clementine and keep her safe no matter what it takes. But during that first game, there comes a moment when Lee's job description changes. There's this other survivor named Chuck that has a serious talk with Lee, and I can't quote verbatim what he said, but the essence of it was, um, Chuck said, Clementine will die, little girl, if you treat her like one. If she's going to survive, you have to teach her the skills she'll need to survive on her own. 
Because like it or not, no matter how hard you try, there's going to come a time when you won't be there anymore, and she has to fend for herself. Immediately after that, Lee teaches Clementine how to shoot a gun, and then sits down with her and talks through what their plan will be when they get where they're going. That's the moment when Lee goes from being Clementine's protector to becoming her teacher. And Lee continues to teach Clementine everything he can right up until his dying breath. That was the first season. The second season is Clementine's story. The focus is on Clementine. She's the protagonist. And it focuses on what kind of person Clementine becomes growing up in the zombie apocalypse. And that's strongly influenced by what Lee taught her. Uh, at the beginning of season two, she's also with other survivors that are teaching her important skills. There's a woman named Krista that she starts out with, and they're sitting around a campfire, and Clementine mentions that... Sorry. Krista mentions to Clementine that she needs to be able to tend the campfire. It's something she needs to know how to do. And then later on, when Krista's gone and Clementine's completely on her own, she has to suture up her own arm wound, one-handed, with a sewing needle and fishing line for thread. And just as she's about to start, Clementine mutters to herself, okay, you can do this, just like Krista showed you. Krista had taught her some first aid. Other people in the second season treat Clementine as an equal because she's so competent and so self-confident that they forget how young she really is. Uh, and by contrast, there's another girl in the second season named uh, Sarah who was protected and coddled by her father and she was completely unprepared to survive on her own. Far more innocent, even though she was a couple years older than Clementine. And when Sarah's father died, she was completely unprepared to survive on her own. Because she had a protector and not a teacher. Um, and in The Walking Dead, A New Frontier, or Season 3, the focus wasn't on Clementine, it was on Javier Garcia, who was a different character. But Clementine was in it, and... What there was of her character development centered around her taking on the role of mother to AJ, becoming like a foster mom for her, for him. And she loved him, and her life revolved around him like a mother and son. Now that we're getting into the final season, I see the need for Clementine to make the same transition Lee made from going from being a parent and protector to being a teacher. That Clementine has to make the transition from being AJ's mother to being his mentor. Now, I'm not saying Clementine isn't gonna make it. I'm just saying this is The Walking Dead we're talking about and this is the final season of The Walking Dead. But, you know, these stories don't have a happy ending. But whatever happens, regardless of what happens, I feel that Clementine is not going to always be there to keep AJ safe, no matter how good of a survivor she is. She has to teach AJ the skills he'll need to survive without her. Because sooner or later, that's going to happen. It sucks that a five-year-old boy has to grow up so fast. That's kind of the world he was born into. And that's why... When I heard how much trouble AJ was for the others before Clementine woke up, it worried me. Because if he can't learn to get along with others better, how is he going to get along without Clementine? Anyway, that's... The point is, I'm seeing Clementine's role here is to try and teach AJ, to try and bring him up right, so that he will be able to survive when Clementine isn't there anymore. All right, now the <laughs> now the percentages. Uh, I'm not sure how meaningful this is, but some of these choices are not um, 
just two options. There might be multiple options. So, so it's a very low percentage of maybe because there's multiple ways to do it. Uh, I think there was only two options here. <laughs> um, kill the walkers and get the keys or let AJ crawl through the window. Most people kill the walkers. I think it's reasonable. You see a walker, you put it down. Only 40%, 47% went hunting with Lewis and ASM. Interesting. The majority went with Violet and Brody. Very interesting. Now, like I said, by the time I had done that, by the time I got to that point in the story, I was feeling a certain vibe from Lewis that he's into Clementine. And I thought, I don't know, it was kind of, maybe it was a stupid way to think of it, but I thought Clementine might have a chance to get Lewis to help the group more uh, by charming him into doing so because he's so into Clementine. That's really the reason I went that way. Wow, most people were like, no, AJ, you should sleep on the bed. I'm a little surprised by that. Um, I just thought it was important for AJ to feel safe. And if he felt safe sleeping under the bed instead of on the bed, that's all right. I'm not going to force him to do that and and uh, put himself in a position where he feels more vulnerable. And it did end up working out. He got over it when he got comfortable um, with that group and, and uh, staying in that place. He, he slept on the bed on his own. So there was an option to give... Abel was the guy's name. I don't think he ever mentioned his name because I was totally giving him the silent treatment. I was intentionally not giving him anything as far as information. But uh, apparently you can try and give him food. To me, he, he's a threat to family. He's got to go. And I wonder if we'll see him again or if he really was eaten by the walkers. I guess we'll see. Most people turn to Violet instead of Lewis. That's probably smarter. <laughs> and after I turn to him, I'm like, oh crap, that's right. Lewis and Marlon have been buddies since, like, childhood. Of course, they're still kind of kids now, but they've been buddies for a very, very long time. It's very doubtful that uh, um, his having feelings for Clementine is going to get between that friendship. So... It was probably smarter to turn to Violet for help, but I, it didn't occur to me <laughs> until after I made that choice. All right. Well, like I always say, there's no right or wrong choices in this game. Just your choice. I have no regrets. Wow. So my choices left AJ feeling ruthless. Now, this again, it looks like a small percentage, but there are probably multiple ways that could have come out there there may have been four or five different ways so it's probably more even split than it looks like he was pretty ruthless he sure got rid of marlin there at the end i don't even know what to think about that you have to think about what the implications of that are and what kind of person aj is becoming i'm not sure i'm happy with it Brody is dead. Huh. Kind of makes you wonder if there was another option for her to not be dead. Huh. <laughs> oh my god! This just sounds horrible! So AJ is ruthless. Brody, she dead. Violet, horrified. Even though it seems like uh, I did nice things for her. She liked it. She still was left feeling horrified. Marlin's dead. <laughs> They're doing this on purpose, aren't they? Man, Lois is lost.
10 is resentful. They are doing this on purpose. This is actually really cool. I love how they've, uh, I love how they've uh, done this. There's a lot more feedback on uh, your playthrough and your choices and the things that you did and how it affected everybody's relationships. It's really good. Omar was glad you checked on it before dinner. Ruby approved of you teaching AJ Manners at dinner. There were other ways that could have gone. Uh, Mitch, or I'll just call him Butthead, <laughs> was happy to show off his weaponry skills to you. Asim appreciated that you helped him hunt rabbits. Willie was embarrassed after he met you for the first time. <laughs> and you learned how to bond with Rosie, with Marlon's help. Rosie, you scary! Well, I guess there were some other collectibles I didn't get. I only got half of them. Eh, oh well. Well, this was a relatively short uh, episode, but I think that's going to be it for today. And uh, next time we're going to start episode two. Tune in for that on Amon Chooses, The Walking Dead, the final season. I searched for a long time. Just when I gave up hope, I found him. We're searching together now for a place we can call home. I'm all AJ has. He's all I have. And I'll protect him with my life. Just like Lee did for me.